Okay, this is my second um, kind of blog video showing you the current state of Democracy 3, which uh, looks suspiciously like Democracy 2 on this screen, but obviously it, this is old artwork. Um, so I'm just going to point out what has changed since the last video. Um, I've finally got an interface in for actually picking the level. So it should load pretty quick. Of course I say that. Okay, there we go. Um, right, it, the first thing is that uh, although this isn't the final graphics, this is um, more what it's going to look like. So previously the games looked really dark and a bit sort of hardcore and serious. And um, now it, it's going to look more like this. It will, it will look much better than this, but this is the first kind of um, sort of colour test of stuff. Um, so th th that's going to be more the kind of general look that you're going to have for the main screen. Which I think is is much much brighter and much nicer than than it has been before. Um, the, the tool tips need to be seriously sorted out. <laughs> um, one of the other things is you'll notice that the icons aren't all the same size. They used to be all the same size before, and so you'd have up here you'd have um, like the the foreign policy stuff, and you'd only be able to fit like three icons in, and then you know here there you'd be able to fit more in and. It kind of, it's, sometimes they'd be really small at the start of a game or if you didn't have many policies and now they kind of they all dynamically position themselves I can I can force it to happen by doing this so um, if you wanted to mod the game and add another 500 policies and run all of them at once it, it would work they'd just all be smaller and hopefully this this makes it much easier to sort of see stuff and 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 find stuff than it was before um, okay, what else do we have? Um, if I pick on a, a policy, I'll pick on this because it's kind of like my default policy to explain. Um, this minister picture here is obviously code art that will be fixed. Um, one of the things that has changed is that if you look up here, that there's a lot more information on what being minister actually does. So this minister is 51% effective, which is, you know, obviously kind of average. So th this shows that you're, you're getting an extra 1% out of income tax because they're in charge, which kind of implies that they're more, um, they're good at closing loopholes and stuff like that. Um, and the implementation time for this is actually higher. As you get a, a, a better minister, the implementation time will drop down. So if you've got a really incompetent minister and you're, you're implementing a new policy, it's going to take forever. And if you make changes, it's, it, it's going to take forever for those changes to take effect. Um, so, so ministers affect quite a few things about policy that they, they are quite important. One of the other things um, on here is I've changed the way these indicators work. Whereas in the last version, you saw that they kind of there was a thick bar and a thin bar now there's kind of light and dark and they they overlap I'm not 100% sure about it yet um, so if I just revert changes this is the current effect and if I do this this lighter bar here is showing what will happen with my changes if I was to go down that lighter bar shows what will happen with those changes and, and it's less of an effect and I I think that's that's fairly intuitive Th these graphics aren't final they're, they're, they're just bodged together um, and, and I think that's a kind of clearer way of showing it than I had before which would get a little bit small um, one of the other things with ministers is they actually get a little bit sort of bitter and cynical over time so they get more experience so their effectiveness goes up but they also get um, shorter tempered so if you upset the voter groups that they like um, they're more likely to resign over time so keeping the your original cabinet together as they become more experienced um, is going to get harder um, okay one of the other th things um, yeah okay whatever is that this is kind of like behind the sort of under the hood stuff and this is the start of a game so you can't really tell what's going on but these are all the the, the pressure groups in the, in the game and some of them are, are quite harmless you know the human rights society is a liberal pressure group and you know they're going to sort of write letters and and do protest marches and stuff like that but each pressure group also has a kind of hardcore version so you'd have the communist party which would 
obviously socialists and people on the left are going to join the communist party and they're kind of harmless but extreme people within the communist party will eventually make their way through to the revolutionary army and the revolutionary army is effectively a terrorist group so th these guys down here th these are terrorist groups and if you let these groups get too big and you upset the people who are feeding into them then more and more of them depending how radical they are will feed their way through into the terrorist groups and then you'll get assassination attempts and you know terrorist attacks and stuff like that so I guess what I'm, I'm saying is you can look at the the kind of harmless protest groups and watch them get bigger and realize that you probably need to address that because they're kind of a recruitment pool from which the hardcore groups are going to draw recruits and then actually threaten you. Okay, uh, but obviously this is all empty at the moment. I've just started a game and nobody's really uh, really joined joined much. There's a few there. One of the other things, if I take a group of voters, um, I'll take environmentalists, although let's see if I can find someone that's actually got an effect at the moment. Yeah, um, previously we've had happiness and, and membership and you've been able to see the effects on each. There's not many at the moment, but and you know there will be more. And there's an extra thing here, which is income. And this is this is completely new, that you can actually have policies that affect the income of a particular group. So agriculture subsidies, they obviously make farmers happy. They encourage people to be farmers for obvious reasons. And they also make people who are already farmers wealthier through the subsidies. And the reason that's important is that, that you will then get more overlap between farmers and, and wealthy people and less overlap between farmers and poor people. So it will actually change the demographics of the entire population so some of these policies now are going to make these little gray bars which show you how many people are in each group you know they will change as a result of your policies based on income so as we kind of expect here there's a lot of middle income people actually not too many poor people and quite a few wealthy people if, if we're subsidizing farmers then a lot of people in this group are going to kind of also become members of, th of this group so that means it kind of more accurately represents the way policies are taking effect and a good example of this is for example child benefit is going to make parents wealthier and, and child provision is going to make parents wealthier so if your policy is to kind of like look after sort of middle income and wealthy people and parents and basically screw the poor you you can <laughs> kind of work towards that by by pushing people who you're going to support anyway such as parents out of the poor group once you've made the parents richer in other words uh, they don't kind of care what happens to poor people because that's not them even if it's an artificial thing that you've done through um through sort of uh, you know state handouts as it were and and tax breaks uh i think that that would be quite a quite a major change it does add a little bit to the complexity of things um and obviously it's quite a complicated game as it goes but i I, I think it's something that, that really had to be modelled. At the moment, I think that's, that's all the stuff that's new that you can actually see. There's a lot of kind of under the hood stuff. Um, and obviously things are all in this sort of lighter colour scheme. Um, so this is closer to the final look of the game. And hopefully the next time I show it off, there'll be uh, some final graphics and all of these um, photo group graphics are, are being changed as well. Hopefully it's looking better. Cheers.